Today we're installing a TGM snorkel on our 2007 Toyota Hilux. However, this guide can be used for pretty much any uh, snorkel install. You're following the uh, kind of same steps really. Uh, you will need the original instruction manuals with your snorkel as well because it comes with a template and there might be some slight uh, differences and changes with your snorkel install, but this is kind of a general guide. Right, first job, you need to remove the inner arch of the driver's hand side. Make sure you get the right side because this is the start of where you're going to put your snorkel. Now, first of all, it's free just where my hand is now. There's one, there's a couple actually, uh, just behind the wheel, further inside the arch there. And there's a couple around the front as well. So have a good look around, make sure you've got all the, uh, the screws undone before you start trying to get these plastic clips out. Now, this is the hidden one, which as you can see here, a socket doesn't really get in there. So a 10mm spanner, all these are 10mm bolts by the way, just about gets in there. Or if you want to, you can take the uh, side step off, I decided not to. I'm using a guide on newhilux.net. Uh, it's a step-by-step guide, tells you exactly what you need, what tools you need. Uh, I'll put, in, put the link in the description down below. Really big help. Uh, without it, I probably wouldn't have got it done. Now you've got that bolt undone at the bottom there. You need to gently prise off the, uh, the plastic guard. You don't need to take it fully off, uh, but you do need to do it gently. Uh, as, as you can probably just about see there, it snapped on me. Uh, you can replace the clips, but I decided not to because you've got a bolt underneath there. Now this is the right pain in the The inner guard itself is actually held into the, with the clips uh, that that screw was screwed into. It doesn't matter what you do, or how you do it, you cannot get these bloody things off. I've used a panel um, panel clip device thing, I can't remember what it's called now. And uh, yeah, it's, you just you won't do it. So I kind of resorted to this. As you can see, brute force and ignorance kind of took over. If you give the, the guard uh, a sharp enough tug, it will come out and it will uh, actually, you'll figure out how to get a, a round peg through a square hole. Chances are you won't get the clips back in, you will bend the little metal tabs, but you can just screw them back in. When I put the inner guard back in, I just screwed it in with some, uh, some big washers. It does exactly the same job. Now, making sure you've got all the bolts undone before you try and yank it completely out it should come out just like that now this took me over two hours so please excuse the little dodgy stance I did I don't even know what that was right now it's time to disassemble the air filter assembly. Relatively simple job, but unless you want to completely uh, dismantle the throttle body, you need to get this air filter top out of the way. Now, I tried some rope. That didn't really work. So, bungee cord wrapped around the bonnet catch and back to it and hooked onto one of the clips seems to do a better job it bends the clip quite a lot but it still works now so best way I found about doing it next up is two 10mm bolts that hold the actual bottom of the 
uh, the air filter assembly in. This is, at the bottom here, you, s you need to inspect the, the one-way valve. This is meant to keep the water out, uh, but still allow any water that might have got in to drain out. Uh, I chose to seal this up later on, but you can, as long as it's working, it technically should be alright. Now, as, as you're not going to be seeing this for a while, you need to give a good clean out of the bottom here. Uh, and paint any worn out uh, paint, because apparently this these parts are prone to one wearing the paint out. This is the stock intake, which is you need to remove. As you can see, it's not very high up in the wheel arch, uh, which is why you're installing the snorkel in the first place. One 10 mil bolt or 13 mil bolt, I think it's 13 mil bolt actually, uh, removes this. And with a little bit of a wiggle, it comes out. You will not need this anymore, so do it, it do with it as you wish. Now, that's all the disassembly required, so enjoy a coffee break. Or two. Or three. I decided to clean the wing as much as I can before applying any uh, masking tape, just to aid any aid the uh, the masking tape to stick. Not particularly necessary, but it's just a nice thing to do. I had a bit of degreaser laying around for an old paint project, so just a bit of a panel wipe, and that means you're definitely going to get it to stick rather than trying to faff around. Then mask at least two layers where it's the big hole is not going to be drilled, which takes a while, but it's worth doing. And then line up the template to find out where that hole goes roughly. So you can then triple mask where the big hole is going to stop it, any possible paint damage. It's not too critical as the snorkel does cover where this goes, but it's still nice to not have scratches all over your wing. Right, once you've done that, you need to stick the template onto the side of the vehicle. It's probably the best to have a spare pair of hands available with this, because trying to get it to line up in the right place and stick it yourself is a royal pain in the arse. 
so it's just helpful to have the extra set of hands. This is critical. Spend as much time as you need to do this because if these holes are out when you drill them, there's no going back. Once you've eventually got the template on, uh, I use the automatic center punch, but you can use just an old center punch and a hammer, or even just a drill bit and a hammer if, you, if you're that tied, but it's definitely worth getting a, an automatic center punch. Just ease of use more than anything. Center pop every single hole you need to drill. Including the big one, of course. And then, with the template still in place, you need to drill a small pilot hole. I used a 3 mil drill bit, because that's what I had laying around, but something around about that size would do. Too big, and uh, you're going to start catching when you uh, come to drill it. Uh, too small, and it's not going to really, well, it's gonna, it's not really, gonna really work as a pilot hole. So about 3 mil in between there, a couple of mil give or take. That's about perfect for it. For a pilot hole. Now you can remove the template. Uh, I mean, if you are not really planning on selling it on, uh, you can just leave the template in place and drill straight through it if you want to. But I thought it'd be handy to have the template with some of the markings still on it. You've already got them pilot holes there, so you can't really go wrong. So as long as you stay in the middle of them pilot holes, you'll be fine. Right, I use the 13mm drill. But if I do it again, if I'm honest with you, I would use a step drill or a Christmas tree drill, whatever you want to call it as it was a bit of a pain to get this 13 mil drill through in one go. But I didn't have a step drill at hand, so 13 mil had to do. Once you've drilled all the 13 mil holes, you can start thinking about doing the big one. Right. I shall leave you watch my pain in uh, drilling this uh, this hole. The only tips I can give you is nice and slow, try and keep even pressure across the whole cutter, and just hope for the best. It's probably ideal to have a spotter with you to try and uh, to try and keep you nice and square. I didn't have that facility at the time, so uh, as you can see, I was a little bit off the majority of it.
Hold it this bit. There it is. Fucking horrible. Ah! Hate every second. Now that painful moment's over, you need to test fit to make sure your holes do line up before you go any further. This is the heartbreaking moment. <laughs> if you've done this wrong, you'll know at this point. Uh, check for alignment up and down. Make sure your uh, your small core body tube. Uh, lines up nicely in the hole. It's not binding on anything. It's a nice square in the hole, and it, uh, it's it lines up about where it should do on the A pillar as well. Before you go any further, then you need to deburr. This is quite important because leaving sharp edges on there is not nice for anyone. This can take some time, but a half round file is perfect for this job and for the littler holes. A rat-tailed or small round file, whatever you want to call it, is perfect as well. Some people have tried using die grinders, I don't think they work, not for this kind of situation. Once you've deburred it all, you can demask now. And now you need to paint every bare surface that you've drilled with paint. I used red oxide. Uh, doesn't This paint doesn't have to match the colour of the car at all because all of it's going to be underneath the snorkel body anyway. Um, some people like to spray it the same colour. Either way, I think you should use red oxide primer, which is what I'm putting on here, before you put on the, uh, the top coat. Because top coat it hasn't really got the uh, the rust protecting properties. Do it nice and carefully. Don't get any drips down the side of the car, especially if you're using a different colour. Not very nice. Ideally, look for something quick drying as well, because there's a few people in here who use top coat and it has a dry time of eight hours. So you have to sit with a uh, sit with a half installed snorkel for eight hours. This stuff touch drive in a couple of minutes. Couple of nice good couple of coats, and that'll be protected. Now you need to install the studs on the snorkel body itself. Uh, you have to use Loctite for this kind of thing because uh, this can easily vibrate out. If you put them all in by a hand first, And then to actually tighten them down, you need two nuts. Uh, screw one nut on first, then the other, and then loosen one, tighten the other. That locks them together, as you can see here. It doesn't take much to lock them together. And then just tighten the top one down. Right, well, my GoPro ran out of battery, so I've skipped ahead a little bit while I was waiting for it to charge. First, I grabbed this template. And this is 
specifically for TJM, I think. Because uh, the air tube goes, starts there, goes along, and then in. So they've provided a little mounting bolt, which you can just about see here. So I have to drill a hole for that. Uh, and then I test fitted it all. And then once I test fitted it all, I had to elongate some of the holes because the template was a little bit wrong. But um, let's see for that how I got it wrong. Uh, and then once I was happy, I could start sealing it together. So I've fitted the airbox, and before I fitted the airbox around the actual airbox tube itself, again, really can't really see in there, uh, I've put a couple of layers of uh, sensor safe silicon sealant. And then uh, just put an extra bead around the outside to try and seal it a bit better. Uh, the one way valve thing I've blocked up, I've sealed up. Worst case scenario, if I have to if I have to unblock it, all I have to do is slit a little hole in it. Job done, so. Mm. Sorry. So that's where I'm at so far. Right. It means now I can start sealing this bit, bolt it all on, and then uh, we can put the pillar bracket on afterwards. Right, time to put the snorkel on. Right, <clears throat> that's all bolted in now. Absolute pain in your ass to get it bolted in there. Uh, but nicely bottled in there. Right. One of the last jobs to do is that's sealed, that's sealed, everything's painted. Last job, which is this is what I like about the actual TGM snorkel itself, is it bolts inside the door pillar. So if for whatever reason I wanted to take this off, I'd obviously yeah, I'd obviously have to get a new uh, wing, but I wouldn't have holes on the outside of the A-pillar, like the uh, <laughs> Safari snorkels do. So, these I just push into place and then I get my uh, get my automatic center punch in that, punch the holes and then screw the tap screws in. So let's get that done. That's brilliant. That is just f perfect. God must be looking down on me. Ah, f Don't think you can see that there, but that is literally just snapped on the last hole. It didn't get stuck in there. How f***ing lucky am I?
trims with these don't tighten up too much. So it is quite a lot, quite thick metal there, but you can easily strip the threads in these things. So I'll be close enough. Then, that's like that look. Nice and secure. Now, bot light down, put the snorkel head on, job done, go home. Well, I already am home. Awesome. It's the only way to describe that. I'm going to put the Jubilee Cape on first. Oh, uh, that doesn't look right. So that's it. Uh, done so far. I'm getting darker, darker. Showing you. Darker. Lighter. Okay. Um. God's sake. Yeah. Uh, so it's all bolted in. I'm gonna leave my inner guard out for the time being. Um, it might be because I lost one of the bolts. But uh, also, if if it hasn't sealed properly or anything. You take, taking the inner guard out took about almost two hours to do, so I want to leave that till I know everything's perfectly installed. Um, but that is it. That's the TGM Snorkel. Installed now. Really solid, actually. Quite impressed of it. Wasn't too happy with the template, uh, but a little, little bit of persuasion and change, and uh, managed to get in there. Now, just need to bolt the airbox back in, and put the air filter back in, and I'm going to leave it for as long as I can tonight to. Uh, So the sealant can go off before I start the car because I, I don't know if it will, but it can't. Uh, it might end up creating an air gap if I start it straight away. It tries to suck through a different area rather than at the top of the snorkel head for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to leave it a couple of hours first until it's starting to get a bit tough, and then start the car, move it. So didn't enjoy that if I'm honest with you. Really didn't. But, it's one of them jobs, once you finish doing it, you get a good sense of achievement out of it. I, mean, I know it's been installed properly, I know it's as sealed as best as I can see it. There's a lot of hidden things behind the snorkel. Which, if you send it to the wrong garage, do your first water crossing, and your engine just stops. It's not your fault, but they don't care. Yeah, so that's how you install the snorkel. 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 Been too long. Five and a half hours.